What's going on, everybody? Guess what I'm about to have? I'm about to have some cereal. The honey bunches of oats. I'm about to pour that bag of sugar on her. Let me go ahead and hook y'all up. I'm going to post y'all up right here and show y'all. I like it. For the longest time, I ain't added sugar. For the longest time, I ain't added no sugar to my cereal. But I like adding sugar. Yeah. First, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Hold up. I'm, I pour the milk first, then I add the sugar so the sugar sticks to it. So the sugar sticks to it, yeah. Honey bunches of oats. She got my baby the oats. Get that milk in there. Yes, sir. Got that milk in there. Now we're about to add the sugar. Make sure ain't nothing on the floor. Now we're going to add the sugar. Alarming levels. So we add the sugar over. Hold up, let me look it up. Could protect against Delta and Omicron. Reducing the risk of hospitalization or death. Let it stick to the top of it. Oh, I add a lot. Add a lot. My brother like, why ain't you diabetic yet? My brother always like, why ain't you diabetic yet? They ran out of ICU beds a week ago. I'm shocked that Massachusetts is in this situation. We are the most vaccinated state in the country. And yet here we are in a surge of COVID that's just as bad as where we were last year at this point. As Delta devastates lives, the more contagious mutation of Omicron on its way to becoming more dominant in the U.S. has now been found in at least 33 states. The CDC says genomic surveillance shows the variant detected at a rate of 3% nationally, but at 13% in parts of the Northeast. What we're seeing in some of these other countries is doubling times of about every two days or so. So really rapid increase in the amount of Omicron that's out there. A year ago today, the first shots went into arms in what many hoped would be the beginning of the end of the pandemic. I need to be very clear. Vaccines alone will not get any country out of this crisis. It's not vaccines instead of masks. It's not vaccines instead of distancing. Yeah, I'm definitely taking a walk tomorrow. Do it consistently. Now, I'm definitely taking a walk tomorrow. Ending some benefits for the unvaccinated. The NFL requiring boosters for staffers. You know what? Spike in positive cases. Because I told you I was standing aside, but I'm always trying to serve change. I'm always trying to serve serve change and stuff like that. I forgot about that. If I don't take a walk, I might be walking and find some money laying on the ground. And if I'm not out there to be walking, if I'm not the one out there walking, somebody else is going to find it. investigation will take you inside a sting showing how criminals are reselling billions in stolen goods and will ask what's being done to stop it. Plus holiday shipping, the deadlines, and what you need Because most of the time I just find silver chains and pennies every day. Like a little silver chain here and there, a little bit of pennies here and there. You know, every day, one or the other, yeah. Sometimes it's them, sometimes it's together, yeah. And every once in a blue moon, I find a big chunk of dollars. I find a big chunk. Who finds that much fucking, I mean, who finds that much dollars, you know? But I'm always scanning the ground. Most people don't look at the ground. They walk with their head high, trying to press everybody, trying to look tough for everybody. So they walk with their head high, you know, you know, with their chest out. I'm always scanning the ground. I'm always scanning the ground back and forth, yeah, looking for stuff, yeah. I found a hundred dollars at Ford Fitness in the parking lot at Ford Fitness Center. I found that was like six, seven years ago. Can't remember how long ago. It was a long time ago. Can't remember how long. I found twenty dollars on Cambridge, covered up in a pile of wet leaves, and the twenty dollars was soaking wet. I had to hang up the dryer. I guess I found. Fifty dollars down the street. I found three dollars down the street across the sidewalk from where I found the fifty dollars. I found one dollar at Dairy Queen on the sewage on the sewage drain. And what else? I think that was all the money I found at different times. That long per- there was long periods of time in between each other. There was long periods of time in between each other when I found them. But yeah. But almost every day I find a penny. 
I call it a nickel, a dime, a quarter, almost every day. One or the other. Sometimes there's two couples. Like sometimes there's a quarter and a nickel together. Sometimes there's two dimes together. Sometimes there's a penny and a dime together. A penny and a nickel together. I find silver chains and pennies almost every day. Township is located in uh, the area they call the Crossroads of America, which is I-89 and I-75. Thieves can jump off the interstate, hit the store, steal the product, and be back on the interstate. Curtis leads a team of three detectives who respond almost daily to organized retail crime and track stolen goods online. Curtis says they often end up on Facebook Marketplace. That's where officers found this power tool set for $350, $200 less than retail at Home Depot. Our cameras were there for the undercover buy. What's up? Is the run open? Yeah, yes, sir. The police arrest him, saying he's a fugitive wanted for aggravated robbery in Columbus and for buying these tools with a stolen credit card. 90% of our investigations actually involve an online marketplace. Kyle Penoyer is senior manager of investigations for Home Depot. I'm good. I'm good. They've locked up high and now got a shipment. Activation. The tool is, is useless until it's paid for. He says online resale makes it easy for criminals to hide and profit. Can the online marketplaces do more to thwart these crimes? Should they do more? I think so. We would like to see that go back to uh, the online marketplaces to do a better job of vetting the people that are selling on the platform. In a statement, a spokesperson for Facebook says, in part, we prohibit the sale of stolen goods on our platform and use a number of tools to prevent this kind of fraud. We encourage people to report suspicious listings. Curtis says these crimes cost all of us. We're all paying for them. It's all affecting all of us, all the consumers who are honest. And Vicki Wynn joining me now. What are lawmakers doing about this? You know, new legislation just passed the Ohio State House, similar to what's already on the books in Arkansas, to help prohibit and limit the sale of these stolen goods online. It would require online marketplaces like Facebook to confirm the identity of the sellers. About a dozen states are trying to pass similar legislation. All right, Vicki Wynn, good to have you here. Thank you. There are just 11 days left until Christmas, and if you're ordering or shipping gifts, the deadlines to get them there on time are fast approaching. Jolene Kent now with the race to deliver. At the jewelry and clothing boutique, Keston. Which order number is that? They're doing everything in their power to deliver holiday magic on time. We pack the orders as fast as we can. So the moment we get your order in, we just try to get it to the post office as quick as possible. But after packages go out the door, they're out of Keston's control. That's why the brothers, sister co-founders, Kevin and Stephanie Lynn, moved their shipping deadlines two days earlier this year. What do you risk losing if a package is late for the holiday season? A lot of times a bling gets shifted to the business. Even though it could be the mail, mail carrier that wants to the milk up. they still... I stir the milk up after I eat our cereal and then drink the milk because it's got the sugar in it.
Oh, that cereal right there. She don't want some milk. Not gonna scrape up by that cereal either. That's the good stuff. We got all the sugar up in it. That's the bottom. When you scrub it up, you get that spoonful of sugar in it. That spoonful of sugar with it. That sugar could be enough for me. That sugar gonna be the death for me.